video lecture 4 of the broken spears so we left off last video highlighting how interesting is that Miguel Leon Portilla by comparing historical documents in the 16th century finds the birth of the devil in the Americas when Muñoz Camargo out of personal interest begins describing Huitzilopochtli as a demon okay very interesting now let's keep on moving to try to understand a little bit about the symbolism of this work further so a very important kind of a, of things to question is did Moctezuma really confuse the Spanish with the gods with the gods of Quetzalcoatl we need to explore way more Mesoamerican mythology in order to further analyze this but the point is that from the accounts that we have from Miguel Leon Portilla it is clear that Moctezuma feels very fearful and starts finding some type of despair seeing that he, these new strangers are are so keen into coming to meet him and coming into Mexico City so he keeps sending gifts but but all of the reports that he gets back is that the Spanish are in their march to Mexico City and he becomes very frightened as the Spanish move in land uh, we have different versions of the events as they occurred again the same thing Sagún informants versus that which is written by Muñoz Camargo we have the defeat of the Otomis that attacked the Spanish in their envoy as they uh, marched towards Tlaxcala and Cholula then the people of Tlaxcala greet the Spanish with gifts and friendships and they make an alliance to settle an old score that the Tlaxcalans had with the Cholulans the Tlaxcalans called the Cholulans for peace treaty and as it was a custom everybody shows up in the battlefield without weapons and this is where the Tlaxcalans had organized themselves with the Spanish to surprise the Cholulans and massacre them massacre the, the, the foot soldiers I mean the soldiers of Cholula uh, because they had no weapons they get surrounded and they get massacred by the Spanish like that Cholula falls to the power of Tlaxcalan and the Spanish alliance they keep marching towards Tenochtitlan Moctezuma sends more gold he's very frightened and Moctezuma hears the reports of how the Spanish lost for the gold then the Spanish arrive to the gates of Mexico City in the shores of the Lake Texcoco there Princess Tlilxochitl persuades the people of Texcoco not to fight and to join Cortes to march to Tenochtitlan here Princess Tlilxochitl quickly converts into Christianity and very importantly burns his mother's house and room in order to force her to convert the mother of Princess Tlilxochitl told them to fight but Princess Tlilxochitl quickly sided with the Spanish and the Tlaxcalans to fight the Mexicans here we have two very important advisors that are next to Moctezuma one is Cacamac and the other one is Cuitlahuac Cacamac convinces Moctezuma to not attack the Spanish and to allow the Spanish with the Texcocans and the Tlaxcalans to come into the city and receive them with gifts so Moctezuma follows Cacamac advice Cuitlahuac on the other hand had warned Moctezuma of not letting these people come in and up until today people in Mexico City keep naming their kids Cuitlahuac who becomes a very important fighter during the war with the Spanish in the historiographical accounts we are wary of why is it that Moctezuma allowed the Spanish to enter either way on the in the, in the historiographical record done by Miguel Leon Portilla shows that we have two versions about Tlaxcala and Cholula on the first version the one from Sagún informants with meaning the point of view of the Aztecs they tell us that the massacre was inspired by the Tlaxca by the Tlaxcaltecans who sought to ally themselves with the Spanish in order to settle se settle a war debt with the Cholulans on the other hand we have the account of Muñoz Camargo who basically blatantly says that the destructions of the Cholulans is the responsibility of the Cholulans themselves because they they did not uh, they were not nice to 
some people that were sent by Cortes with the Cholulans and therefore what we have is a clear disagreement of why the Cholulans were massacred. Okay. A very important fact to be aware of is this flower wars where the Tlaxcalans had this constant state of war against the Mexicas. In this constant state of war, it is clear that it was politically convenient for the Tlaxcaltecans to ally themselves with the Spaniards. After all, the Spaniards were from gold and the Tlaxcaltecans told them where they knew they were lots of gold, meaning in the city of Tenochtitlan. Like that, the Tlaxcaltecas left plenty of evidence, written evidence, particularly from Muñoz Camargo, into their main interest in aligning themselves with the Spanish was their hate towards the Mexicas. This is also clearly explained in Cortes's letters. Okay. Now, when the Spanish are welcome to Texcoco, it's a very important part because uh, as you're more interested in all of this historiographical narrative, we could spend an entire semester just analyzing these topics. But a very important account comes from what's called the native conquistador, which is Alba Istlizochitl's account of the conquest of New Spain. Who is Alba Istlizochitl? Uh, well, he's basically the great great grandson of Prince Istlizochitl of Texcoco. Okay, so that's a, a, an important caveat to make to make sure that we know that there are various sources that begin corroborating the complexity of the narratives that we have access to to understand these processes. Now, we know that Moctezuma went to greet the Spanish and the Tlaxcalans as friends. We know that the Spaniards told Moctezuma that he had nothing to fear, that they came in friendship, and very quickly took him for ransom. The people suddenly were very terrified and quickly lost respect for Moctezuma for letting, him, letting himself get captured by these foreigners. It is during these days that the Spanish raid the coffers and start demanding more and more gold for which Moctezuma actually accedes and tells all of his servants to obey the Spanish. This fuels yet more the disparity and the anxiety of the people of the Mexicas who highly valued fierceness and not kneeling down to anybody so they cannot really accept that he is their Tlatuani is suddenly being captured by these people. What we have here is from the Lienzo de Tlaxcala, when Hernán Cortés and Lamalinche meet Moctezuma II in Tenochtitlan on that fateful day of November 8, 1519. Here we have a Cortés, Lamalinche, which was a very important translator in this process, who was a slave, now was a, a, a slave, who was given away to Cortés upon his arrival, and it is her who helps translating from Nahua to first to Maya and later as she learns Spanish, she learns from Nahua to, to Spanish as well. Now, there is a very important part here, which is the massacre during the, during the fiesta of Toshkatl. And we will begin here our next video lecture in the, because this is a very important symbolic event that helps us understand why there is Aztec dancing today. So we'll continue here in the next video.